If you're still wondering whether SpaceX will launch the massive Starship rocket from Florida, the answer is undoubtedly yes, and even that launch date may be closer than ever. This story is not without merit, as evidenced by the latest action from the Federal Aviation Administration. Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. What did the FAA just do with SpaceX and Starship in Florida that shocked NASA? When can we expect to see Starship launch in Florida? SpaceX is planned to build a Starship launch complex at the Kennedy Space Center are moving closer to reality, even as it potentially takes over a launch site from neighboring Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Recently on May 10th, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, announced that they are beginning an environmental impact statement for Starship launches from Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. This marks a significant initial step in SpaceX's efforts to launch Starship from Florida, and the FAA's response suggests that this process may be resolved swiftly, unlike past launch approval delays. Currently at LC-39A, SpaceX has constructed the head of the Starship launch tower adjacent to the existing launch pad used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Significant work on this new launch tower ceased at the end of 2022 as SpaceX shifted focus to developing the Starship and Super Heavy rockets from their test launch site in Texas, where they conducted three flights with varying degrees of success. However, in recent months, SpaceX's activity regarding this Starship launch tower has become notable again, with rumors suggesting they're preparing to construct additional infrastructure components to support launches from this site. Combined with the FAA's actions, we can certainly see that SpaceX will eventually conduct launches from the Launch Complex 39A sooner or later. But why is the FAA involved? I'm sure many SpaceX fans and longtime followers of our channel have been while wondering about this. We all know LC-39A is the location leased by NASA to SpaceX, and they together completed a less stringent environmental assessment, EA, in 2019 under the National Environmental Policy Act for Starship. What this means in our minds is that if SpaceX launches Starship at LC-39A, they wouldn't have to deal with the hassle of obtaining individual launch permits for each launch. However, in reality, it's been reported by multiple sources that the assessment at that time was never submitted to the FAA for launch licensing. And now, considering the changes to Starship, both NASA and the FAA have concluded that a new environmental impact statement, EIS, is necessary. SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 EA, the FAA stated, including a catch tower for super heavy booster landings. An EIS is a much more comprehensive document compared to an EA. While an EA covers basic requirements, an EIS delves deeper necessitating a thorough discussion of reasonable alternatives and a thorough examination of the proposal's cumulative impacts. This includes considering all existing and reasonably foreseeable future developments within the project area. In essence, EAs operate on a limited scale, akin to piecemeal planning, while EISs offer a more holistic landscape-level approach. The original 2019 EA called for building a launch mount, liquid methane farm, transport road, deluge water system, landing zone, and high-pressure gaseous commodity lines. NASA issued that year a finding of no significant impact, concluding the environmental impacts associated with Starship Super Heavy infrastructure development and operations would not individually or cumulatively have a significant impact on the quality of biological or physical environment, said FAA. While the purpose and need for Starship Super Heavy at LC-39A have not changed since the 2019 EA, the Starship Super Heavy concept of operations has evolved from the original 2019 EA scope, according to the FAA. Although the FAA hasn't publicly disclosed when the new assessment process will be completed, typically an EIS evaluation can take around 18 months to finalize. SpaceX will be responsible for preparing the assessment under FAA oversight. Alongside the new review, SpaceX also expanded on new proposals. According to a statement from the FAA, the SpaceX proposal includes constructing the necessary infrastructure to support up to 44 launches per year from Launch Complex 39A with Super Heavy Booster and Starship vehicle recovery landings at LC-39A or on a drone ship or expending them in the ocean. The call for 44 launches builds on 2019's plans that called for up to 24. That's a surprising number we didn't anticipate. If we stick to the predicted 18-month timeline for the environmental impact study I just mentioned, starting from the date of investigation by early 2026, we could witness dozens of consecutive Starship launches and landings from the Space Coast. However, in reality, this time frame might even be shorter, as per Elon's statement earlier this year, that the company plans to commence Starship operations at LC-39A by mid-2025. So, what do you think would be the appropriate time frame for SpaceX's development? Give us a number down there in the comments.
The Super Heavy booster will also land back at LC-39A, while in the earlier EA, SpaceX proposed landing the booster on a drone ship or at Landing Zone 1, the former Launch Complex 13 at nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy booster landings today. Additionally, SpaceX now proposes to construct additional launch infrastructure not previously contemplated in the 2019 EA, a Super Heavy boost catch tower, a natural gas liquefaction system, an air separation unit for propellant generation, and stormwater deluge ponds. SpaceX also proposes to launch an advanced design of the Starship and Super Heavy vehicle up to 9 Raptor engines for the Starship and up to 35 for Super Heavy's booster. Accompanying propellant storage and distribution pipelines would also need to be constructed, especially if the launch cadence cited in the notice comes to pass. That and SpaceX will need to construct fabrication, storage, and refurbishment facilities for both the booster, the Super Heavy first stage, and the Starship, the now familiar spacecraft that at first glance resembles a rocket from a 1950s sci-fi movie. After announcing the commencement of the assessment, the FAA will hold an online meeting and three public scoping meetings, inviting relevant agencies and organizations, local Native American tribes, and members of the public to provide comments on the potential environmental impacts of the proposal. The public comment period began May 10th with a publication of notice in the FAA Federal Register regarding the intent to prepare an EIS. Interested parties can attend the in-person scoping meetings on June 12th and 13th, followed by a virtual meeting on June 17th. Further information is available on FAA's website. Considering the scoping period, the public can submit comments in person or electronically through June 24th before the EIS moves into the next phases. The new study will proceed concurrently with the EIS as the Air Force responsible for space launches from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station had been previously reviewed several months ago. Earlier this year, the Air Force announced it too was starting an EIS for its own potential Starship site with its primary choice of Canaveral Space Launch Complex 37. This site for years has hosted United Launch Alliance launches, but ULA's lease is set to end after the final Delta IV Heavy mission this past April. A second undeveloped launch complex is also being considered. The Department of Defense is interested in Starship's capabilities to support its mission and wanted its own pad for launches similar to how SpaceX maintains Falcon 9 launches from Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40 in addition to the KSC pad. Regarding the specifics of the Air Force's EIS plans, they've been outlined on the website spaceforstarshipeis.com and a series of public meetings have been organized. While specific outcomes are pending with enticing options that increase the company's scalability, there's no reason for SpaceX to overlook them. With two environmental assessments and two potential launch complexes in the near future, SpaceX is gradually demonstrating its capability and effort to achieve the goal of thousands of launches. After all, Starship plays a crucial role not only in the broader aerospace industry, but also bears global scale responsibilities. Starship is SpaceX's planned fully reusable rocket, meaning eventually to replace its Falcon family of rockets. Elon Musk's goal with a vessel is to enable the settlement of Mars. The rocket has the capacity to fly up to 100 passengers or up to 500,000 pounds of cargo to space, which is more than three times the payload capacity of Falcon Heavy. The capacity of potential point-to-point -point flights on Earth that could rapidly deploy cargo or even troops also have the Department of Defense interested in Starship's success. Moreover, NASA is counting on a version of Starship to be used for the Artemis III mission as the human landing system that will bring astronauts, including the first woman, back to the lunar surface for the first time since the end of the Apollo program in 1972. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.